This October, a new thriller is coming to theaters. The Marsh King's Daughter stars Daisy Ridley, and the story takes place here in the UP. And it's based on the internationally best-selling novel of the same name, written by Michigan author Karen Dion. And Karen joins us now. Karen, congratulations. How do you feel? Thank you, Sarah. You know, I really only have one word, and that's surreal. It's such a rare thing to have your book made into a movie, let alone, you know, a major motion picture that's going to debut exclusively in theaters. It just blows my mind. I bet so. Are, are you like ready to, to see it the first day it's in theaters? <laughs> I am. <laughs> you won't, nobody could keep me away. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So tell us about your novel. You know, sometimes when we see movies based on books, it's a little bit different. So tell us about your novel, The Marsh King's Daughter. Sure. So The Marsh King's Daughter is the story. It tells the story of Helena, who for the first 12 years of her life, she lives with her mother and father in an isolated cabin on a ridge surrounded by marsh or swamp in the Taquaman and River Valley. And during that time, she never sees anyone except her mother and father, which, you know, it sounds grim, but she loves her life. It's all she knows. She's a little tomboy. She loves hunting and fishing and foraging, and she adores her father, just worships him. Well, she finds out when she's 12 that the reason they live like that is because her father kidnapped her mother when her mother was a teenager, and she's the product of that crime. And, you know, he hid her away in, in the swamp. So that's half the book. In the modern day or present day part of the book, Helena is a young mother of two little girls. She's living south of Grand Marais. Her husband doesn't know her history because there was a lot of notoriety when she and her mother left the marsh and she just wanted to put all that behind her, have a, a quiet, peaceful life. So she changed her name, changed her looks, and he has no idea. Her father has been in the maximum security prison in Marquette for a dozen years. He escapes during a prison transfer and disappears into the Sini Wildlife Refuge, or so he makes police think, but Helena knows he's coming for her. So in the present day part of the story, she has to use the hunting and tracking skills that he actually taught her as a child to find him before he could find her. So cat and mouse game in the present interspersed with, you know, how she grew up and gradually came to realize that her father is not a nice man. Wow, yeah. Uh, did you have any input in how the movie was made at all, or was it kind of a surprise to you? Well, it's interesting because the day that my literary agent sent the manuscript to see if any of the editors wanted to publish it in book form, he told me, by the way, you also have a film agent. And honestly, I thought, I guess it could be a movie. I didn't think movie for a second as I was writing the book. Some authors do, I did not. So then when um, Anonymous Content, uh, the production company that's responsible for the movie Spotlight and The Revenant, when they optioned the book, it was with the screenwriter, uh, co-writer of the screenplay for The Revenant attached to adapt my book. So given that I had, you know, not only zero screenplay writing experience, but I didn't even imagine my novel as a, as a movie, I was very happy to just hand it off to him, you know, this extremely talented man. And um, I read the script and I think he did a fantastic job. That is so cool. Now, obviously you draw a lot of inspiration from the UP. How did, how did you find that inspiration? Well, that's almost a story in itself. In the 1970s, my husband and I were living in Detroit. We were a newly married couple. And we were part of that back to the land movement where young people from the city wanted to feel closer to nature, live off the land and so forth. Um, we actually started looking for land down south first. We went as far as Georgia and we couldn't find anything that we can afford. And um, we were in Kentucky. My husband was a stoneware potter at the time. And we met a potter who said that he sold a lot of his work in the Upper Peninsula. So we came back to Detroit, we regrouped, and we just kept going north until we found land we can afford. <laughs> so it was pretty much by chance that we ended up in the Upper Peninsula. And of course, you can't live off the land in the UP, but we didn't know that. We made a lot of mistakes. So we lived for that first summer, we lived in a tent while we built this little cabin. We carried our water from a stream. We sampled wild foods. Our oldest daughter was six weeks old when we moved up there to do that. So in writing a family that's living off the grid and a character who loves nature, 
I think you can probably see how easy this was for me to do this. I drew a lot from my own personal experience. And um, yeah, it was it was just a joy to write the book. Sometimes it felt like I was writing a memoir. Yeah, I bet so. And this is not the only novel that you've written based in the UP. You've got at least one other out now and maybe one more in the works as well. Tell us about that, those. That's correct. So um, my follow up to The Marsh King's Daughter, they're both standalone. So, you know, the books are similar, but you don't have to read one or the other first. Uh, it's called The Wicked Sister, and it takes place in four, on 4,000 pristine, never been logged acres of wilderness southeast of Marquette. So you know it's fiction, right? Because everything's been logged in the Upper Peninsula. But in this case, it tells the story of a young woman as the book opens, she's in a mental hospital and she's been there for 15 years by her own choice because she's punishing herself, believing that when she was 11, she was responsible for the accident that took her parents' life. And so um, she finds out fairly early on in the story that she couldn't have been. So she returns to her child home, which is this gorgeous, over the top, beautiful log cabin on this in this wilderness area. And uh, well, the story ensues from there. <laughs> sure. Well, um, one final question for you, Karen. Where can people find all of your novels up here in the UP? Oh, the UP has been such a fantastic supporter of all of my novels. So in Marquette, Snowbound Books always has copies. In Munising, uh, Falling Rock Cafe and Bookstore has copies. So uh, I think that's probably covers most of the viewing area. Perfect. Well, Karen, thank you so much. And congratulations again. The Marsh King's Daughter is out in theaters October 6th. Karen, thank you again. Thanks so much for having me.